Hello, this is Christopher Long, and I'm joined here with Mark Fisher, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Public Philosophy Journal and how uh, we envision it uh, working with this presentation. So it begins with an account of traditional journals. And here is a uh, picture of the, the stereotypical conception of the philosopher alone in, uh, with his thoughts in the, in the basement, uh, a little bit of the natural light shining through the window, uh, but basically working on his own. So we uh, see an, an analogy with the way traditional publishing often happens. It is um, often by invitation only, or if there's a submission, uh, the work is done uh, largely in isolation. Uh, and, um, and we're thinking about ways of opening it up. And then once the submission is in, the, the clock starts ticking. Uh, there's generally at least a six month turnaround uh, while uh, article is being reviewed by experts uh, and then uh, at the end one gets the decision either that it's accepted, uh, that one needs to revise and resubmit, or that it's rejected. And once something is published, even when it is published, it's published in paper journals uh, where there's limited access, there's limited number of copies, limited readership, uh, and it's expensive to produce. And then the, uh, to the extent that there is uh, response and commentary, that often takes place uh, in, in other secondary literature uh, that may come out in, or in uh, uh, further volumes of, of the journal. Uh, and then once in a while, uh, the original article and the, and the response are, are printed together uh, at the beginning. Now, we don't want to give the impression that uh, there is no virtue to paper scholarship. Um, we do see uh, a lot of virtue to it. We were both trained in, in paper scholarship and the virtues of paper scholarship, the care it takes to do careful, slow reading, readings, the time that takes, um, and of course libraries are built to um, archive and retain uh, print uh, scholarship, so there's a dimension of, of permanence. Uh, but even so, we are trying to develop um, uh, a model that pulls these virtues of paper scholarship together uh, with uh, digital scholarship, and that is why we have um, uh, begun to work on the Public Philosophy Journal. And one of the guiding ideas behind the Public Philosophy Journal is, uh, as you see uh, in this quote from Clay Shirky, that filter and publish whatever its advantages rested on a scarcity of media that is a thing of the past. So we're buying into this idea of the publish then filter method and we think that, uh, that that is a good way to get ideas out as quickly as possible and to have them worked on by a community uh, uh, of people working on similar issues. So one of the things that we're thinking about is um, uh, how this whole process is going to work. And so Mark's going to give us a kind of a bird's eye view now and then we'll go through it. Um, uh, piece by piece. Right, know. right. So we can think of the ecosystem uh, as sort of beginning with uh, thoughts about the various paths into the, into the Public Philosophy Journal, and then amplifying uh, the content that we see there, uh, generating feeds of various sorts, um, which will kick them into a review process, um, and then uh, we'll have open peer review and uh, ways of reviewing reviewers, and then either from there the articles will be published or they'll be kicked into a developmental uh, writing process, um, and then uh, from there, um, uh, again, either published or uh, cultivated in other sorts of ways uh, through open public dialogue that uh, potentially will uh, produce uh, further work that will feed back into the ecosystem. So let's look uh, at the various paths into the Public Philosophy Journal. We're envisioning um, three basic paths. One is, of course, the traditional submission model. Um, where people will be able to submit uh, uh, papers that are related to uh, issues of public concern uh, to the journal itself. We will also uh, sometimes invite papers in, uh, on specific themes, but the main path into the public philosophy journal will be through uh, our process of web curation. And uh, the idea is that people should be able to publish their work anywhere on the web and our um, computers uh, should be able to read those posts and deliver them to us in the community using software like Press Forward um, to curate uh, interesting conversations from around the web. We also know that we uh, have a community of people in the Public Philosophy Network who are doing interesting work, so we'll be listening to the work that those, that those people are doing as well. And once they are brought into 
um, the Public Philosophy Journal will work to amplify those uh, those um, links and uh, uh, in in the feeds that we develop. All right, we'll generate uh, daily feeds where uh, where the, uh, the the various uh, links that we have we have discovered through uh, through. Uh, press forward or, or some other similar web reading device. Uh, we'll push out um, uh, uh, links to uh, to the community uh, that, that community members will then have the opportunity to uh, to uh, review, uh, to like or dislike, uh, uh, and vote them up uh, into what would then be a weekly feed, uh, and then the best of the weekly feeds would then feed into a monthly feed. And um, so we're hoping, in part, that some of the, that these feeds will begin to be followed by a variety of different kinds of, of people, journalists, public intellectuals, as well as a general population, people interested in, in, in questions of policy and, of course, other uh, academic uh, philosophers. The process then will move into uh, a kind of a review process, a peer review process, and we envision this as open peer review, uh, and that is to say that... Um, we will be inviting people with relevant expertise to review uh, work that has uh, been curated and amplified through the public philosophy journal process, and they will be uh, reviewing it with um, uh, an eye toward all the academic standards that we usually have with regard to publications. Um, but we're um, so we're envisioning sort of two phases. That is to say, um, there'll be these, this official review process, which is an open review process. Uh, that uh, reviewers will be able to annotate the text and bring um, comments to bear on the text. And at a certain point, those uh, expert reviewers will be revealed to the author as well as the general public. But even during that time, uh, the rest of the people reading these um, articles on the, on the web will be able to make comments and add comments just like they would on a, uh, uh, on a podcast. And that, that same open peer review process will be used also for uh, for articles that are just submitted by uh, by authors or for invited articles as well. So, and part of the point of this is to um, cultivate the values of um, open public scholarly deliberation. And we'll be working on a policy for public deliberation with the Center for Democratic Deliberation here at Penn State. Uh, this journal is a collaborative endeavor with um, us at, at Penn State and. Um, those uh, working in Matrix and at the, in the philosophy department at Michigan State University. So there's a collaboration involved in, in this process as well. And coming out of that review process, it may be that uh, it's determined at that point that the, that the article is, is ready to, uh, to be published and, and it'll be sent uh, directly into the uh, Journal of Public Philosophy. In other cases, uh, instead of uh, a more traditional revise and resubmit process, what we have envisioned is a collaborative writing space uh, where we can perhaps have aspects of mentoring, um, where we can have uh, people working together to take uh, articles that have been submitted uh, and, and work them into, uh, into um, stronger articles uh, for publication in the journal. And it's really this collaborative writing which will happen uh, digitally online but also may happen in conjunction with uh, meetings of the Public Philosophy Network. Uh, will potentially bring elements of face-to-face -face communication together with, with um, online digital communication. Uh, and we think that this is one element that is really um, uh, unique and, and uh, potentially transformative to the discipline of philosophy and to digital scholarship. So some of those articles, after they've been reworked, will go into the journal um, uh, and, uh, and will be published in that sense. But out of that process, potentially other articles uh, will emerge, ongoing discussions, uh, potentially uh, collaborative uh, research programs could, could grow out of this, uh, and all of this happening uh, by way of an open public dialogue uh, that, is, uh, that is both uh, uh, manifesting the virtues of, uh, of, of public scholarship and also uh, producing uh, uh, first-rate uh, first rate. Right. Uh, and then, of course, that, that since it's all open, it may feed back into the beginning of the process. So some of the work that's being done that doesn't necessarily appear in the journal itself uh, may be, I mean, even some that does appear in the journal itself will be the seeds for future research that would feed uh, the, the beginning of the process. 
Um, and, and so that, that, that would be kind of the, the whole um, cycle. One thing that we didn't mention when we were talking about re uh, the review process is that there will be a process by which reviewers themselves will be reviewed. Authors will have a chance to give feedback um, to reviewers as well as the general public who are participating in the journal will be able to give feedback to reviewers. So reviewers will become credentialed um, through a process of um, the quality of their reviews, the credentials that they already bring with them in terms of the positions they hold in the publications that they've had these traditional academic um, uh, credentialing. Uh, we, we, we don't, however, want to um, uh, be uh, naive about the limits of uh, such a, a, an undertaking, um, just as we didn't want to be uh, have too much of a caricature of the, of the problems with paper scholarship. So we want to mention here um, a, a couple of issues about uh, the limitations of digital scholarship. Yeah, community is hard. It's, uh, it's great to have plans to, uh, to initiate these, these uh, communal processes, uh, but the, uh, the work of, of getting people uh, committed, uh, getting people to give their time uh, in a consistent and, and ongoing way uh, is certainly a challenge. Exactly, and, and of course there's challenges of being public. Uh, there's challenges of untested elements of this um, uh, of this technology and That's of right. cultivating the values right. we're trying to cultivate. And we don't yet quite have the analog of the public library in the digital realm that uh, there's a lot of work that's going into uh, determining how we can catalog and archive these sorts of things. Um, and so the ephemeral nature of, of, of digital publication is also something that we need to be, uh, to be thinking about. So uh, that's uh, how we envision the Public Philosophy Journal. We invite those of you who uh, might be interested in helping us develop this journal to visit us at the publicphilosophyjournal.org and to fill out a um, the form that we have there under participate uh, that will give us your information and we will be sure to contact you and invite you to uh, help us develop what we hope is a very exciting new form of digital scholarship in philosophy.